Good morning. How are you, my dear ones? I just wanted to go ahead and read chapter two of Stones of it or Millennial Rain, Stones of Emptiness. <laughs> Brittany A. Christian Chronicle 4 of the Abyss. All right. Let's get to it. Chapter 2, As in a Glass Darkly. Irma came into the living room and announced dinner. She watched with concern as the good doctor told them he'd be right back. He went back into his bedroom and came out a few minutes later with his face washed and hair combed. He had changed his clothes and once more looked almost like a movie star to Rose. She sighed in her spirit. He was so handsome and he was going to be her husband soon. She had all but forgotten his alcohol breath. He came over to Rose from behind her and put his arms around her and hugged her, hugged her tightly to himself. Ah, oh, my beautiful Tishva, Tikva, he whispered into her ear, I do love you so much. Rose's heart skipped a beat when he said that he loved her. She squeezed his muscular arms that were wrapped about her and said to him, I love you too. This made him beam with happiness. They then sat down to a lovely meal. Irma had outdone herself. She had roasted lamb shanks, Mikhail's favorite with herbs and spices that smelled divine. There were also roasted potatoes and vegetables and a delicate garlic sauce. A lovely salad of fresh greens and beautiful rose, rolls that smelled out of this world. She had also made a lavish Jewish baklava with nuts and honey for dessert with an, an ingredient in it, in it that Rose had never tasted before. Was the secret ingredient lavender? It was wonderful. Rose hadn't eaten since early morning and was starving. They both ate heartily and had very little conversation. Finally, Mikkel pushed back his chair and sighed. That was so good. I hadn't eaten since yesterday. I was very hungry. Rose waited for him to go on and, and explain, but he didn't. Instead, he looked deeply into her eyes and watched her for a moment, embarrassing her by his open study of her. You are so beautiful, Rose. I really love the outfit that you're wearing. It is very becoming on you. His eyes roved over her in appraisal and his face showed approval of the simple white lace dress and bolero she was wearing. Rose dropped her eyes, and when she looked back up at him, he was staring off into space as, as though something was weighing heavily on his mind. He felt, she felt that something was terribly wrong, and a chill washed over her as she watched him. She, she wondered if everything was all right, or if she had offended him with the thing with Gustav. He snapped his attention back to her and asked her, What did Gustav, Gustav say to you? Oh, nothing really. He had just gotten here when you got out. When you came out, he seemed really upset with you. He said you were old friends. But it didn't seem that way to me. You almost seemed enemies, Rose replied gently. Gustav and I go back, way back. But friends, no. That is not what we are to each other. We have a lot of bad blood between us from the past. But I tolerate him because we both come from Russia. Our families used to be close at one time. 
but not anymore since my parents died. Mikhail once again seemed distracted as he stared off once more into space. Something was obviously bothering him, and she wondered if maybe he was upset with her. But then he reached over and touched her hand. Tikba, my darling, there's some place I want to take you. Would that be all right? It's getting late, so we should leave now. He went back into his bedroom and came out dressed with a pair of jeans, a casual shirt, and jacket. Where are we going? Do I need to change? Rose asked, suddenly feeling overdressed. Would you like to change? My daughter is about your size. Let's go into her bedroom and pick you out something to wear. Mikhail led her back into the bedroom. The room was definitely, definitely that of a young girl. It was decorated in pink with ballerinas and stuffed animals and had other girlish adornments. It was a lovely room. Mikhail went to the closet and pulled out a pair of jeans, a pretty blue sweater and a brown leather jacket. Go ahead and change. I will wait for you in the living room. When Rose finished dressing, she joined Mikhail. He smiled a big smile at her, as if he heartily approved of her outfit. She was a little worried because the jeans were a little snug, but from the looks of his smile, she could tell he really liked the outfit. She had her other clothes with her and he got a bag for her to put them in to take with her. Are you sure it's okay that I borrow these clothes? You don't think she will mind? Of course not. She's a very loving and generous girl. If she was here, she would have suggested it herself, he said with a reassuring smile. He grabbed her hand and led her out to the car. Mikhail drove for a while and soon they were in a section of town Rose didn't recognize. He parked in a parking lot and led her through an old church out a gate and into what almost looked like a park. It had benches and lots of foliage and many alder trees that looked ancient. There were a few people milling about and sitting on the benches in the waning light. This is the Garden of Gethsemane. I was sure you would want to see this place. Rose looked around her, surprised. So this was the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus had spent his last few hours before he was arrested and crucified. Rose reached into her purse and pulled out her Bible and turned to Matthew and read aloud. Matthew 26, 36 through 46, King James Version of the Bible. Friends, I'm gonna have to drink some water. Hold on a second. It's about close to nine o'clock and I got this little dry from after I've gotten up. I'm a little dry mouth. Then cometh Jesus with them in, unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his the disciples, Sit ye here, and I will go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he saith, yeah, then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry, tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little farther, and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. 
Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, If this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples, and, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is, he is at hand, and death betrayed him. Rose's eyes were filled with tears when he, she finished reading the passage. Her Lord and Savior was actually in this garden, where she was sitting right now. Her heart was sore sad and at the same time excited that she could be in the very place where Jesus had prayed to his father on earth. Mikhail watched her intently and she saw his eyes softening as he looked at her. Rose, you have strong faith, don't you? You really do believe that Jesus is Messiah. Rose reached for her handkerchief in her bag and wiped her eyes. Mikkel, I believe with all my heart that he is Messiah. I've been saved nearly all my life. I've seen what faith in Jesus has done for people. So many miracles. I can't even begin to tell you. I would have to write a book to share with you all the marvelous things I have heard and seen in my life. Jesus loves us so much. He wants nothing more but to share himself with us. Can you imagine the glorious God and creator of the universe wanting to have an intimate relationship with each of us? He wants to be as close to us as a much loved father or brother or the very closest of friends. He created us so we could fellowship with him, and we are very precious to him. He wants us to have his very best, but we have to trust him. Just like a little child trusts parents that love him. We have to trust him and know that he wants to direct us on the path that will lead us to true peace in this world. I know that people say, well, why do all these bad things happen if God is really in control and if he really has that kind of love for us? What they don't understand is that we live in a world filled with evil because we have an enemy and his name is Satan. Satan was created, created to worship God he was an archangel and had great power and beauty, but he became prideful and infatuated with himself. And he was filled with ambition and wanted to be God himself. He led one third of the angels with him in his rebellion against God and was thrown out of heaven onto the earth. He hates us so much as God loves us. He wants to destroy us and he would but God prevents him from doing his worst to the ones who belong to his son, Jesus. When people live outside God's grace, terrible things do happen to them. Horrible things that can only be prevented when we belong to Jesus. Let me ask you one thing, Mikhail interrupted her. If God loves the Jews so much, why have the Jews suffered 
And why did the Holocaust happen? Rose was quiet for a moment, and then she spoke gently, but with conviction. The devil, who, who is humanity's enemy, hates the Jew, because the Jews are the ones that gave us the word of God. Abraham, as well as the other prophets, on down through the ages, told us, told us, told us about the awesome God of the universe that they loved and worshiped, the almighty God, the creator of all things. And what the Holy Spirit revealed through them pointed to the coming Messiah, Jesus, the Son of God. They did not think of these things themselves, but were inspired by the mood and the power of the Holy Spirit. Other nations were serving the devil and proselytizing his lies throughout the ages with their worship of Baal and other demonic gods. The Jewish na nation was serving the one true God. But even though God warned the Jews through his prophets about getting involved with idol worshipers, they didn't listen and fell away from their worship of the one true God and left them wide open to the devil getting a stranglehold on their nation time and time again. And Rome finally completely destroyed the nation and the remnant was dispersed throughout the world. But God always left a remnant of the Jews. Even though they were dispersed throughout the world, the devil came against them once again through Hitler, using the hatred that evil man and many other wicked ones had for the Jews, and they murdered six million of them. As horrific and devastating as that was, still a remnant survived because of the mercy of God and his love for the Jewish people. This remnant created the nation of Israel, and there are many scriptures that bear out that God gave that land to the Israelites. And she started to read from her Bible, Numbers 34, 2 through 4, King James Version. Command the sons of Israel and say unto them, When you have entered into the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall unto you for an inheritance, even the land of Canaan, according to its borders. Also it says, and she continued to read to him, Exodus 6, 6-8, King James Version of the Bible. Wherefore say unto the children of of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgment. And I'll take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land, unto the land, concerning the which I did swear to, to give. I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it to you for a heritage. I am the Lord. Joshua 1, 2 through 4, King James Version. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them even to the children of Israel every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon even unto the great river the river Euphrates all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. The word of God is very clear how much the Lord loves the Jews and he has proven that by giving them back their homeland. Even though she, Israel, has many enemies, God is her protector and will continue to be until Jesus comes back and sets his feet on the Mount of Olives and begins his rule in Jerusalem. Then he will teach the nations 
how he meant it to be in the beginning. There will be peace like there never has been on the earth. It talks in Isaiah in the Old Testament, Testament that even the animals will be at peace. The lion will eat straw, and a child will be able to put his hand into the adder's nest and not be harmed. Jesus will rule the earth as it was meant to be ruled, with love, mercy, and justice. Mikhail was thoughtful for a moment and then put his arm around Rose. Oh, to have your faith, Rose. This morning, my friend died in my arms. The one I have been attending all this time. I wish I could have had your faith to share with him this morning, but I don't. So I didn't know what to say to him when he asked me if I thought Jesus was the Messiah. I couldn't tell him anything because I don't have faith in Jesus. And now I feel so bad because I feel I have let my friend down by not giving him the answer he was looking for. Do you think he went to hell because he didn't believe in Jesus? He was a wonderful father and husband. He was kind and generous to a fault. He was a devout Jew more than me and loved God. He was waiting for Messiah to set up his kingdom, kingdom in Jerusalem. I just can't believe he went to hell because he didn't know Jesus as Messiah. Rose was in shock over his revelation, and tears sprang to her eyes. As she listened to Mikhail, she realized what he had been suffering at the death of his friends. What should she tell him? Lord, what should I say? Please, that the Holy Spirit will reveal to me what to say, she prays in her spirit. And then suddenly a verse in Zechariah came to her. She opened her Bible to the verse and went the rock to the well. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. I think this, Mikhail, I think this is the answer that might help you. I believe this means that God pours out his grace on the Jew, which means unmerited favor. And supplication to me means if a person is intently and humbly seeking after Messiah, Jesus will reveal himself to that person. I believe he reveals himself to the devout, to the devout Jew and to anyone who sincerely wants to know and love Messiah. I read a book once by a pro prolific Christian author who had written allegorical, allegorical books about Jesus and his kingdom. Jesus was al allegorically written as a lion, and his kingdom was made up of people and animals. The animals talked, and the people interacted with the animals. At the end of the series of books, there was a battle and the people had to decide who they would follow. The one that loved the lion got in line to follow him, and the others lined up to follow evil. I think if someone truly wants and loves Messiah, then Messiah will reveal himself to them. I don't know when it happens. I can't tell you if it's the moment of death or before. We will never know if people made it into the kingdom until we go there and see them for ourselves. Each man is judged according to what's in his heart. God is the only one that knows the condition of a man's soul when he dies. I think, Mikhail, you just need to trust God with your friend. You did not have the answer he was looking for. But if he was truly seeking Messiah, 
I believe Jesus revealed himself to him in the end. And he had the chance to recognize and love him. Be at peace. I pray that you will find Jesus as your Savior before your death and believe too. Mikhail shivered in the cool evening air at her words, but didn't say anything. He tightened his grip around Rose. Rose leaned into his embrace, and they sat there for a while, each with her own thoughts, as the sun set in the garden of the set of Gethsemane. Let me drink some water, friends. And that is chapter two of Millennial Reign, Chronicle Four of the Abyss. And as you can see, Mikhail wants to know about the Messiah. He truly does. He loved his friend and he wanted to give him an answer about the Messiah, but he didn't, he didn't believe in Messiah. And so he was afraid because he didn't want his friend to go to hell. But Rose explained it very well. God loves the Jew and God loves us. And he gives us every, every opportunity he can to bring us to him before our death. So friends, let's continue reading. I will drop a video soon of chapter three. I love you guys. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.